Today I'm going to show you how we can repair an aluminum irrigation line. And all you need is a pack of the rod, HTS735 from aluminum-weld.com. Something to clean the area you're going to be repairing, like this hole here. Something like that. And a torch. Now, I'm using propane here. You might have to use map gas, that is the yellow can. And a very good torch tip. This is a TS8000 by burns o -Matic. This is adjustable, puts out a lot of heat. Now the first thing I got to do is clean off the oxidation off the aluminum. So I'm going to use this drill and a wire wheel. And that is what I did on this piece here. This is a larger piece of a uh, irrigation line. I had a large hole here, so I put a patch on it. I just cut a patch and put it on it. A large, smaller hole like I did here. It's like a 22 size hole, 22 caliber hole. Uh, very easy to just to go right over the top of it. The rod, rod will bridge 3 eighths of an inch very easily. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll do the repair. So basically what I'll do, we'll do this little crack here first. I know this is not recoverable. You'd cut it off and put a splice in there. And I got a video on how to do that. Look at my video on the st strength test of square tubing. And so you got to butt this together and go ahead and make a repair. And we'll also show you how strong this actually is. And once again, we'll take a, a drill, clean off the oxidation. The next thing I do, I'll get my torch and I'll grab one of the HTS 735 brazing rods. And then I'll apply heat to the area I'm going to make a repair. Move the flame off to the side and I'll check it. Very important. Very important, do not put the rod in or near the flame. The aluminum must melt the rod and that's very easy to do because the rod melts 500 degrees before the aluminum does. So you can make a repair, walk across that muddy field that you cannot get a truck in or a welder and go ahead and make a permanent repair on these cracks. I'm going to turn the torch up and heat this up and make this repair. the heated aluminum. See that? The rod is being melted by the aluminum. And now that I got up the temperature, all I got to do is maintain that and then I can make that repair just like so. It is important you go past the area of repair by oh three eighths of an inch or so. That ties the aluminum together and you get maximum strength that way. You'll see that on my square tubing video when you if you check that one out. I'm gonna turn the torch back up. Uh oh then back the heat up. And I'll pull that up. As the rod solidifies, I can pull it up with it just like so. Make it a little thicker and stronger. Just like soldering, you can go over it many, many times. Okay, now I'm going to make a repair on this larger hole here. This is kind of the limit of what I would what I would do without a patch. I'm going to do it sideways to show you it works overhead, it works vertical, uh, and of course it obviously flat. I didn't get that thing all the way there, did I? Now I can see it. I didn't see this side from where I was at. So I can come back now and say, okay, I didn't get that. Heat it up and continue on. But I must get it up to the correct temperature. I can't just apply rod until I get the aluminum back up to temperature. The reason for that is the pores open up in the aluminum and this rod actually penetrates into the pores and that's where you get your strength, 45,000 pound tensile strength. I'm gonna turn the torch up again. again with the rod. I can use a piece of steel to pull that up if I would like. But 
that actually has repaired it. And we'll show you the strength of it in a little bit. But first, I'm going to make a repair here, and that's, this will be a better uh, place for me to actually show you the strength of it. So once again, I'll clean that up with a wire brush. Same as I did before. Pull this over a bit so it's on the fire bricks. And I'll put one on top. Okay, I got it cleaned up with that drill and a steel brush. I can use a steel brush because there's not any aluminum in the rod. So I don't have to worry about carbon contamination. It also works on dirty contaminated aluminum very well where other products would not because of there's no aluminum in the rod. So now I've got my, steam, my steel instrument here. I'm going to get a puddle. I have to pull it up and, and fill that hole. But here we go. Apply the heat. And check it. When you work vertical, start at the bottom and work your way up. Let the rod kind of harden a little bit. And you'll see that, and then I'll work the side on upward over this hole. 3 8 is what I recommend. This is, this is bigger than 3 8 This is probably a half inch there. So the rod just melted. You see that? The aluminum's melting the rod. Now I'm going to put some rod all the way around this. And then I'll start trying to bridge that. So I don't recommend one this large. And I did get that. I'm going to make that thicker because that's not going to be strong enough. Let's turn the porch down. There we go. That was just a small film there. There we got a good puddle going. And I'm going to let that cool and we'll add more rod to it for increased strength. I'll put, keep the flame going, and uh, it missed. Here we go. Let's let some rod go over the top of that. And we'll pull that up with a piece of steel. Get this on the bottom side. I'm trying to stay out of the way so you can see what's going on here. that cool so I got a nice sag there I'm gonna work that up once that gets a little more solid now we'll add more heat I want to get that nice and thick make it even more strong add some more getting it pretty well now The easiest way to do a large hole like this is to actually put a patch on it, but I just want to show you it is possible. I got that pretty well there now. I'm going to put a little bit more on there. And there we go. So see, I started at the bottom and working that sag up, just adding rod to it. I got a good thick layer on there now. That took about a half of a rod to do. I can even make it thicker if I'd like. I'll put a little bit more. We're going to take a hammer to this and see what happens. There, put a little bit more on there. And we'll let it cool. And when you cool it, it's got a slow cool. Do not put water on it to cool it because it, you'll lose your strength. Now you can grind that down and make it look nice. I think I'm going to do that too after it cools. And then we'll take a hammer to it and uh, see what happens. It, but typically you're just looking at 100 PSI max on, on your irrigation lines. And this will easily hold that because the rod is actually designed for air conditioned refrigeration and you're six, 700 pounds PSI with a very small molecule. The refrigeration molecule is much smaller than the uh, water. So water's easy. So we'll let this cool. 
I'll grind it off and then we'll take a hammer and a screwdriver and try to poke that back through. But one thing I'm going to show you is the inside of it because you can see nothing at all fell through to clog up your system or cause you any problems internally. Now, we can get some light in there. Can you see that okay? The inside of it. Is that good? Yeah. Is that better? If I turn it this way? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So it bridged it very easily. Nothing's fallen in there to, to mess up your pumps or any of your uh, working mechanics. I think the drill will kind of make it look a little nicer there, you see. And that's acceptable. Now let's see how strong it is. Hold your pressure. Well, uh, I don't know if I can poke it out from the inside. You see that? I'll separate the bricks here. And uh, let's do it this way so you can see it maybe. We uh, try to get on that. Almost made that tail better. Can you see that? Didn't budge a bit. Let's try it again. Get on it here. Can you see it okay? There's the inside of it. And it's in the outside. It's a permanent repair. You can do it. All you need is a propane torch, a brush, and HTS 735 aluminum brazing rod. You can get it from my website aluminum-weld.com. It stores indefinitely, has a 100% money back guarantee. That's my phone number to call if you have any questions. I got a lot of videos on YouTube and my website. You get an instruction sheet with it and let's say all the instructions are there it stores indefinitely buy a pack of this rod you don't have to worry about it going bad there's no flux to go bad it stores indefinitely moisture doesn't bother it a bit just put it in your truck got your brush got your torch go out there and fix your irrigation line save hundreds of dollars and lots of time